This last section for chapter six is going to combine concepts from chapter two in with chapter six in that we are going to look at the energy changes in our chemical reactions. So all of our chemical reactions are going to involve some sort of transfer of energy. Okay, Sometimes um, reactions are going to give off heat to their surroundings, so they're going to feel hot. Some are going to absorb heat from their surroundings, so they're going to feel cold. And we have different concepts for when we give off energy versus when we absorb energy. Now regardless of whether or not a reaction is going to give off heat or absorb heat, we still have to get put in a certain amount of energy to get a reaction to start and okay? get the uh, reactants motivated to actually interact with each other to form products. Um, that energy that, that we have to add in is called the energy of activation. or also called the activation energy. It has a number of different symbols. They all just mean the same thing. Sometimes it's just listed as a capital E by itself. Sometimes you'll have the capital E with a subscript of ACT. Uh, sometimes capital E with just a subscript of A. Okay, they all refer to the same thing. Basically, this is the energy that we need to add to get a reaction to go, Okay, to get that reaction happening. And this is regardless of whether or not overall it's going to give off or absorb heat. Okay, All reactions need this energy of activation to be met. So if we look at this concept kind of uh, graphically, and just very simply, uh, we're going to basically look at reaction time. So as the reaction progresses, 
And then we have energy here. If we start off with our reactants, having a total amount of energy, and then we form our products, okay, and this, so this is the total energy of our products, we have to put in a certain amount of energy to get these reactants to actually form products. Okay, and it's not a direct line in between them, it's more kind of like a hill. So we have to get up and over this hill in order to get this reaction to happen. Okay, this extra amount of energy that's required, that is our energy of activation. Okay, if we don't have this amount of energy to get to the top of this hill, this reaction's never gonna happen. Okay, so we have to add this energy even though overall, okay, our reaction is going to give off energy. And this energy that given off we call delta H, which we've seen before. This is our change in enthalpy, okay, or our change in heat. We saw this first uh, at the end of chapter two when we talked about uh, enthalpy of fusion and enthalpy of vaporization, or heat of fusion, heat of vaporization. And basically what we're looking at for this delta H now is just very generically in that this is the change in heat of the reaction. And again, we call that enthalpy. So overall, this reaction is going to give off heat. Okay, this reaction, the reactants are higher than the products. Energy has to be conserved. So this energy difference here is going to come off the reaction. Okay, um, so basically um, so our delta H value when we're looking at this is going to be negative. Now we can also have uh, reactions that absorb heat so overall need an extra amount of energy but that's still going to require that energy of activation. And so, yes, we have an overall uphill battle or uphill climb to make, but it's actually bigger than what you would think. I mean, we still have an energy of activation barrier to overcome. And then our delta H in this case is going to be the difference between our reactants and our products, just like it was over here. So our delta H in this case is going to be positive. And actually, should not have an arrow down there. We're going to have to add energy. So this is going to absorb heat. Now I have two different terms for these types of reactions. Okay. For a reaction that's going to give off heat, um, you can kind of think of <clears throat> this heat as it is exiting. So it exits the reaction. Um, so what that uh, means is that we have what's called an exothermic reaction. And for when we're absorbing heat, means kind of our heat is going into the reaction. And we're having to add heat to that. And that's an endothermic oops, reaction. <clears throat> All right, 
So it's important for us when we're looking at these exothermic versus endothermic reactions is we want to know this value here. We want to know what this delta H is. Okay, And there are two ways um, to kind of show what that delta H value is. Okay, The first way is to include um, that delta H just on the side of our chemical equation. Okay, so uh, for our exothermic reaction, if we look at an example um, of the combustion of methane, so CH4, that's an organic molecule, so you don't have to worry about the name. Whenever we combust something, what we're doing is reacting it with oxygen, and we're always going to form carbon dioxide and water. So what we'd do is we'd show our chemical equation there, and then off to the side, we just say delta H is negative, uh, in this case, 210 kilocalories. So remember, we're giving off energy, so that delta H is going to be negative. For an endothermic reaction, we have the same concept. Okay. Um, different reaction. Say we have water molecules and we're going to split those apart into hydrogen and oxygen. Uh, I don't remember the exact value of this but we're just going to kind of go with this. Uh, we'll, we're going to say delta H for that is a positive 100 joules. Okay. Now technically you don't need the plus there but I like to include it when I'm looking at delta H values just so I make sure that I'm looking at a plus value versus a, a negative value. The other option that we have to show our delta H value is to include it as either our product or our reactant. If heat is exiting, that means that heat is being produced. So heat is a product. So the other way that we can represent that is put this energy term in the actual equation itself. So everything else looks the same. We would just include that 210 kilocalories as our product. For our endothermic reaction, okay, heat is a reactant. We have to include heat to get this reaction to actually go all the way in addition to that energy of activation. Okay, so heat is a reactant. So we would list it as a reactant. Okay, in this case, we start with our two water molecules. Then we'd have to add an additional 100 joules of energy to form our hydrogen, oops, hydrogen, and our oxygen. So we're basically, we're giving off heat for our exothermic reactions. Okay, our, our heat is exiting. So that means that heat is either going to be listed as a product, okay, or your delta H value is going to be shown as negative. Okay. What that means for as far as um, obs observations for this reaction um, is that your glassware or your surroundings in the case of your lab that you're going to be doing, it'll be your baggie. Okay, your glassware will feel warm. For your endothermic reaction, your glassware or your surroundings or your baggie will feel cool. one of the best examples um, of things that you may have experienced in your life of exothermic versus endothermic 
are your instant uh, hot and cold packs. Okay, those packs that you squeeze together and they uh, crack and the chemicals mix and they either get warm or hot. Okay, if it gets warm, that's because it's an exothermic reaction that's happening in that bag. If it gets cold, it's an endothermic reaction. Okay, that, that bag is absorbing the heat uh, from its surroundings so it cools down the surroundings.